Hi, I'm Mark Daly, immigration lawyer with Pro Forma Immigration Attorneys. This video is about getting U.S. permanent residency for your spouse, especially if you're a U.S. citizen. This is a step-by-step -step guide for filing all your documents and forms with the USCIS. And this one, is video six, is the assembly and filing with the USCIS because procedures are very important in immigration and they can cause huge delays in your case if you don't set things up right. They can get turned back, you bouncing back and forth, it can become a nightmare very quickly. So I'm going to give you my best tips as an immigration lawyer to how to prepare these right. So this is step-by-step -step immigration forms we're working through right now, which is basically where my clients fill out their own forms and they bring things to me and then I go ahead, look them over, spend two hours with them and get everything ready to submit with USCIS. It's a low cost, low cost alternative to working with attorneys. But as an attorney, I also have pro forma immigration attorneys where we do full representation cases in family immigration, business immigration, detention removal, and we work with our clients as their attorney. So we enter our appearance in the case and then we go all the way through the case with them. But for most part, this is going to be for people who want to do their paperwork on their own. We also do immigration law training. So we provide training for lawyers from other disciplines, other fields of law who want to get into immigration law. And I do a three day intensive training with immigration lawyers uh, or for immigration lawyers who want to get into family immigration, business immigration or detention and removal immigration. And I, you know, give speeches. I do uh, the, the circuits of uh, the bar associations. It's a picture of me at the Federal Bar Association. And then I'm licensed by the State Bar of California, a member in good standing. And I'm also a member of the American Immigration Lawyers Association. And I got my law license in 2000. And it's 2020, so it's been 20 years. Five years before that, I worked with my mom in her immigration law office before uh, I actually became a member of the bar while I was in law school. So I consider it to be 25 years at this point, but really I've been practicing law for 20 years. So the terms we're gonna work on, petitioner is the US citizen, beneficiary is the immigrant, the applicant is also the immigrant, and in this case we're gonna be looking at what we're doing, which is downloading the forms, getting your documents together, getting your information together, filling out the forms. This is what we've done already. We've already done these steps at this process. We are now at assembly and filing. That's where we find ourselves right now. And then the final video will be regarding your interview, your green card interview where you and your spouse go in and get the green card. And you know, we've got to always follow the three holy rules of filling in forms. First, answer all questions fully and accurately. Two, if a question does not apply to you, for example, if you have never been married and the question asks, provide the name of your current spouse, type or print NA, unless otherwise directed. And the third rule, if your answer to a question which requires a numeric response is zero or none, for example, how many children do you have or how many times have you departed the United States, type or print none unless otherwise directed. What they don't tell you is they mean this for basically every box that's on the form. Here's an example. This is a rejection notice from the USCIS regarding the use of NA, not applicable. All right, let me check this out. This notice of action references right here. This notice of action Reference, okay, here we go. This notice of action references your form 918, Petition for You Non-Immigrant Status, which you submitted on 2-2020. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Service is unable to accept the application for the reason indicated below. You must complete every block and question as described in the instructions to form 918 and 918 Supplement A, block and question. If the question does not apply to you or you do not know the information requested, you must place NA, meaning not applicable or available, none or unknown in the box. B, you must complete the following sections, parts, areas, or questions below. Part four, 
If the fields in part four do not apply to you, you must answer in A to questions 1A, 6A, 11A, 12A, and or 21A. What do they mean? Here is the 918, and this is the addition date. This is the question that was asked. Here's what we provided. Family name of spouse, given name of spouse, middle name, date of birth, country of birth, relationship, current location, and then the child. Family name, given name, middle name, date of birth, country of birth, relationship, current location. Then in 11A, we put not applicable and nowhere else. So up here, no not applicable here in fam 16A, 21A, no not applicable. And we pick it up and we do it right. Why is that problem? We'll check it out. If the fields in part four do not apply to you, you must answer NA to questions 1A, 6A, 11A, 16A, and or 21A. So in those boxes, we needed to write NA and we didn't. Part four, if a name is entered for any question in part four, 1A, 6A, 11A, 16A, and or 21A, then the remaining questions pertaining to that family member must be filled out. Well, when we will go back to this form, 11A, not applicable. And they're saying the rest of this must be filled out because there's a, something that appears there. Yep. 11A, right there, 11A. Then the remaining questions pertaining to that family member must be filled out. So we put in um, not applicable. That's one of our choices. So anyway, um, if in doubt, fill it in. Just fill it in. So here's an example of what this is going to look like. Here's your I-485. Okay. There's my name. See all the NAs in all the boxes? Yeah. Other names I've used, NA. Okay. Information about you, if I got an online account here, none. Care of, okay, there's none, but you're not gonna put none in here, right? Because this is all filled in. Alternative, there we go. All the way down. Passport, no travel document used. None immigrant, none. Now here, it doesn't allow you, I mean, you go in here, but you can't put anything in the boxes except for here, right? So I would go back and I would hand write whichever one I wanted to choose, and then none in here, N-A, N-A. So this spouse adjustment of status, you know, when we're putting the packet together, we want to look at the USCIS website. So in the forms website, there's this really great place that talks about forms information and form filing tips. So we're going to show you that. And then on my website, stepbystepimmigrationforms.com, in our resources, we also have sample cover letters and we have all kinds of sample documents that you can see, like letters of good faith marriage and different types of birth certificates, translations, on and on. You'll see, we'll show you what we've got there for you to look at, to learn what stuff, how stuff should look. So we're gonna look at assembling your forms and documents in a way that the Immigration Service wants to see them. So let's start with the Immigration Service website here, forms, all right? And then we're gonna click on forms, we get into forms, and on the left-hand side is a column. And it says popular forms, which are get you to the popular forms, but then we got this forms information. Let's look what's under there. You got forms by mail, forms filing tips. Let's look at these. Okay. Let's make this a little bigger, maybe. Please read and follow the form filing instructions. Form fees, eligibility requirements, fee waiver eligibility, required documents and mailing addresses vary depending on the form you're filing and why you're filing. These tips, will, these tips will help ensure we accept your application, petition, or request package for processing. And complete your form accurately. Don't forget to sign your form. We will reject and return any unsigned forms. And then use the most current version 
Okay, complete the entire form. If you handwrite your answers, use black ink. Make sure entry is neat and legible. Don't use highlighters or correction fluid or tape. If you make an error, start over with a clean form. If filing multiple forms, write your name, date of birth, A number exactly the same way on each form. Pay the correct fee. Send single-sided copies of the application. Assemble your application. We recommend assembling your package in the following order. Check or money order. Write the form you are filing in your A number or other applicable identification on the check or money order. So with the check or money order, what we like to do is we like to staple it to the form. So you'll see when I show you the completed package, we'll staple the money order directly on the first page of the I-485 or the I-130. Whichever the top form is, we pay for the whole thing with one check and we staple it. And then the next one after that is the I-1145, and then the G-28, and then the form being filed, right? So you're not gonna have a form G-28 because you're not hiring an attorney to do that. So without the G-28, it says the first one here, the 1145, is gonna be the top one, and then uh, form being filed, your check and money order is gonna be stapled to the form, and then the supporting documentation after the form. Submit the documents or evidence listed in the form instructions. Have an English translation. Submit copies unless we request original documents. The only original documents are gonna be the forms themselves. If you're sending in a medical exam, send in the medical exam. The check is gonna be an original document and then your passport photos are gonna be the originals. Everything else is a copy. If you have any attachment, make sure each attached page has your name and A number. Okay, we got that. Send single-sided copies, we got that. Mark the envelope and the cover letter with the nature of the submission. Okay, the cover letter is what we're gonna cover right after this. And I like to put the cover letter on the very top myself. Mark the envelope with the cover letter and the cover letter with the form number, whichever form it is. In preparing your packet, remember, do not use binders or folders that we cannot easily disassemble. No binders. You use binders at the embassy. When you're walking in a petition to the embassy, bring a binder. You don't mail in a binder. No folders either. You're gonna have just eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. All right, a couple things stapled to them. The medical exam is gonna be taped onto one eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, you know, but the whole thing is gonna be just one block. Use fasteners to hold together thicker, bulky applications or petition. Two hole punching at the top of the material for easy placement in the file is appreciated. Yeah, let me show you what that looks like. So here's what we're talking about. Paper fastener set, a two inch base and a two and three fourths inch prong. Box of 50, okay? But here you can see it up close. It's got this little locking side uh, clamp and the prongs fold over into them. So this is what you use to secure them, right? And then um, you're gonna use the two hole punch in the top, and then you're gonna use one of these two hole punches in the top. You set it for eight and a half by 11 down here, you put the pages in and you poke the holes in the top. Next, sticky tabs assist in locating items listed as attachments. For easy filing, place the tabs on the bottom of the page, not the side. We don't do that because um, we don't believe in extra tabs to scan and to uh, be part of the record. So we just don't give them tabs. They can just find it on their own. We don't use tabs because, and we don't want them to, to muck up the uh, scanners as well. Um, do not use heavy duty staples, fasteners, or heavy clips, right? Do not submit originals. Do not submit oversized documentation unless it is necessary. Send single-sided copies of your supporting documentation. Mm -hmm. Sending more than one case in an envelope, clearly separate the cases by rubber band or fasteners. You won't be doing that. Mail your forms to the address listed on that form's webpage. Mail your application petitions or request to the wrong filing location. You may reject it. 
Yeah. Other if it's a and smaller they'll, envelope, like then I'll tape USPS it to, like to a piece of paper and prong it in with the rest of the they application. They will actually deliver express. No, it's always going to be sealed, so you box. never want to open so it. So we like right. USPS for that. Other okay. required documents: copy of petitioner's birth certificate. Copy okay, so here's what the cover letter looks English like. Translation. The cover letter copy is be a marriage spell certificate. Out everything you're copy of all pages from beneficiaries. Package. Name of country, passport. And arguing copy of beneficiary I ninety four, showing most recent on the entry front date end. Blank. Make any copy of beneficiaries you need B1, to make. B two visa or maybe their border crossing information card. or stuff you're going to see later. And then we go to the form I eight sixty four. This is your opportunity to get your information on the form, including. A 1040 so from one year, a 1040 from from another top, year, a 1040 the from the third year, of course, USCIS. You're going to always confirm Petitioner's this employment address. verification letter. Always confirm. Petitioner's three most recent pay stubs. Then we go to the 944, Declaration of Self Sufficiency, including mailing addresses copies of diplomas, decrees, and certificates, high school and above, web page foreign degree equivalency form. certification. Right. Fields of study for high school. Regarding here, of applicant skills, work experience, job offers, and incomes. Occupational Last skills name, certifications caps, and licenses. Bold, when these were obtained, who first issued name, the certification or license? You know, license cap numbers, and lower case renewal is a little stylized. This includes, here. but it's not this limited. This shows the work skills training, training first name, licenses name for specific occupations one. or professions. And then in here, and certificates, documenting, mastery, or apprenticeships, and, and skilled trades or professions. This language is from the law to prompt you to add these things to it. What you're going to do is you're going to make bullet petitions like you would here with the tax returns. You're going to put bulletproof from all the proof of your occupation you know Same thing two, with form I one skills, work experience, and job alien offers. Relative and two photos of petitioner, right. two photos of beneficiary, resume and, and letters, five references five. for workforce skills. Double check this amount. Proof of applicant assets or benefits. Signature in the world in U.S. Fee. dollars. You must always want to double check the amount, description of the asset, proof of ownership, and the basis for the owner's claim on the cash value. No, this is proof I of applicants, liabilities and debts. Exams of liabilities and debts, liabilities and debts include mortgages, car loans, unpaid child or spouse support, unpaid Form taxes I-45. and credit card debt. Provide documentation for each liability or debt and explanations or just for negative credit report two. entries. Passport, proof of applicants, credit card, and score, and, and report. 1760. Now this would be five USCIS review your U.S. credit I report and credit score. One thousand one hundred and forty for your I-45 credit card and eighty-five for the credit Double check this amount. So you can put for your U.S. credit one report check, and the credit score submitted with your declaration if it's available to, the to review your financial status. Or you can if break it is available, I did like the last credit or you score can number. Even if you put do not have a credit report, state credit score, score one third. provide documentation that demonstrates you, want to you do, it do not have a credit report or score with a credit bureau. Because you've included you may provide evidence of, of continued payment of bills if there is no credit um, report or credit to score. And in this, you know, our documents we have like a sample letter of those. Let's see where that. It's right before passport style photos. Sample letter addendum. requesting a credit report. Right. We have this Form here. The immigrant sealed. spouse, the medical the annual credit vaccination report, report request service. And again, I like the free just, annual uh, credit take report. That thing and there's some language it's in, in here. It's in a big envelope. A big envelope. Uh, I like get to it. Just poke the holes and, in the top uh, and so stick we, it we in there and prong well. it up. And let's see. Um, we're at the credit score report. Proof of applicant's health insurance, treatments, and positive prognosis of conditions. For each policy, a copy of each policy page showing the terms and types of coverage an individual's covered, or two, letter on the company letterhead or other evidence from your health insurance company stating you're currently enrolled in health insurance and providing the terms and types of coverage, or three, the latest form 1095B health coverage, or form 1095C employer provided health insurance offer and coverage if available with evidence of renewal of coverage for the current year. Proof of applicants' public benefits, including applications, receipts, or certification of public benefits or notice of withdrawals. Proof of English language proficiency or other languages proficiency. Certifications or courses in English and other languages in addition to English. Now we move on to the proof of the good faith marriage. We have letters from the petitioner, the beneficiary, friends, and family regarding the good faith marriage. Copy of lease agreement for apartment showing both names and signatures. Medical insurance cards and medical insurance statement. Copy of auto joint insurance policy, joint bank accounts from the U.S. bank, letter from HR Block addressed to both, wills for petitioner and beneficiary, copies of envelopes mailed to both petitioner and beneficiary at the current address, copy of collage of photos from beneficiary and petitioner. If you have any questions or need assistance, please do not hesitate to call or you can email me at blank and then you sign it via U.S. Express Mail. I like to, to pull the little Express Mail sticker and put it right here. And then when I scan everything, I'm going to be scanning in the express mail sticker right on the cover letter. That's a little piece that is really nice to have.
All right, the last thing I'm gonna show you then is our website, Step-by-Step -Step Immigration Forms, and where we store our sample documents. So it's down here in our resources. We have our fiance visa sample documents. We have sample marriage-based adjustment of status documents. So here's the instructions for all the forms. Here's a checklist. There's some questionnaires, intake forms, sample birth certificate, marriage certificate, divorce decree, uh, birth certificates. Here's a K-1 visa sample, the photo sheet for the good faith marriage, sample of letter in support of good faith marriage relationship. This is a good one. Amos Moses. Here's a sample letter from Amos Moses. Yeah, this is a good one here. And then um, employment verification letters in here. Here's the I-130 sample forms. Here's a sample cover letter. Receipt notices. This is what a receipt notice looks like when you get it. All kinds of stuff in here. Um, a biometrics appointment notice when you get the biometrics appointment. It's gonna look like this. You can check out on the website if you're curious about what stuff looks like. Adjustment of a status appointment letter, right there. We're gonna look at this more in our next video when we're talking about the interview. Sample list of questions, yeah. And then uh, how to contact us on our Zoom telephone consultations. Okay, so there you have it how to assemble and file those documents, those forms, your whole life with the USCIS, and how to make sure you're sending things correctly, you're sending in the right fees, you got your documents all put in order, and everything looks good. And then we will go on to the last one, which is gonna be around your marriage interview. So come back for video number seven, our last one, about what to expect at the interview. Thanks a lot for watching.